Thank you. So if we look at the computer industry today, there are three trends that have been driving an enormous amount of economic advancement and all kinds of great new products coming out. So we're seeing more and more devices shipping, and we're connecting those to our networks. On those, we're seeing more and more valuable information, and we're, being able, we're able to add more and more features into those devices. Now, being a computer security person, I get to look at the dark side of this, which is that means that we have more targets for attackers, we have more reward when they break into our systems, and it means that we have more vulnerabilities that can be exploited in those systems. So most of the presentations today have been looking, about, looking at why creativity is such a great thing. But being a computer security person, I'm looking at this from a more negative perspective. <laughs> Attackers want to solve those hard technical problems. They want to achieve their objectives. And they are changing the world, but not the way that we want them to. So when we look at the way creativity has been historically used in computer security, and I say historically, there's a long history of 20, 30 years of um, going through this cycle that I'm about to describe to you. So defenders will go and build some kind of a system that they think is going to stop the attacks and make the system secure. And then the attackers come along and use their creativity to find weaknesses in those designs. The designers then go try to update those systems. And every month when Patch Tuesday rolls around in your Windows machine, downloads updates for half an hour, you're seeing the result of this kind of a cycle going on. And it keeps on going around and around and around. So the next question then is, how is this actually working out? Well, I don't think I have to tell you the answer to this. If you pick up the newspaper and just look at what's going on, we're failing very, very badly. That is, at least if you're a, on the defensive side. If you're an attacker, this has been fantastic <laughs> and is getting better and better. So why is this? And this really comes down to the fact that this is a problem where creativity helps the attackers and doesn't help the defenders as much. And I'm going to explain that over the next couple slides here. But the basic problem as a system designer in my job, if I get 999 things out of 1,000 right, I've failed. If you're an attacker and you try a 1,000 things, and that one most creative thing that you try works, you succeed. You break into the system. You achieve your objective. So we have this mismatch in the level of quality or assurance or consistency that's required. So one way to think of our modern computer systems is they're kind of like fractals, where you have, at the very highest level, the way that you might interact with a device. It's sort of the, the f features that it provides. But when you dig really, really down deep into the individual lines of code, of which there can be 100 million, or the individual transistors, of which there can be billions, that tends to be the place where the bugs lurk. And when you're looking at the very high level, you understand statistically that there probably are mistakes. There are just so many lines of code here that nobody could get them perfect. But you have to understand what's going on and look at the very, very um, detailed points in the system to actually figure out what the individual failures are so that you can fix them, or if you're, a if you're an attacker, exploit them. Now, this isn't a static problem either. So every 18 months, Moore's Law predicts that we'll be able to put twice as many transistors into our computing devices. It's a little slower than that right now. We're seeing similar increases in the complexity of software, and those increases will continue. Artificial intelligence and other technical advanta advances are dramatically speeding up the, um, are d dramatically inc increasing the complexity of our computing system. So this complexity creates bugs. It also hides the bugs. And in this exponentially accelerating world, the one tool that we have to deal with it isn't getting any better. In fact, with the current presidential election, I put a little little dip <laughs> down there. Um, so going back to this cycle that I described a minute ago, where we have attack and defense, and humans that are running both ends of that, one of the things that you might start thinking about is I mean, artificial intelligence is one of the areas where we're seeing the most exciting advances in computer science right now. Maybe we can use creative artificially intelligent systems to help come to our rescue, or maybe not. Maybe those systems are going to be used by attackers to find the vulnerabilities in the systems that, for example, we've already deployed and can't update. So the question of where does this end? And there are really three scenarios that are possible. One is really catastrophic. We are putting our critical infrastructure, our transportation systems, our financial systems, our power, our water, everything is going online and getting connected with buggy computer systems controlling everything. So one scenario is that those get used against us in really, really uh, disastrous ways. There's a middle outcome, which is where technological progress stalls. So 
the risks that we have due to computer security grow with complexity, and those, so those risks are growing exponentially along with Moore's law and the complexity of our systems. But the value of the features that we're getting aren't growing exponentially. If you take a phone and you go from having one processor in it to four processors, it's not four times better. It's just a little bit better. It's a little faster. Maybe the video games look a little bit sharper, but it can still, it's, it's just not a big improvement. You take your word processor, you put twice as much code in it, it's not twice as useful a, problem, a product. So the value of the system is the value of the features minus the risks that it creates. And so if we can't cope with these computer security problems, the net value of the systems we produce is going to be falling. And the more complicated systems will be less valuable than the ones that we already have. And then the third possible outcome is the one that I'm the most excited about, which is that we might be able to have some kind of a defensive breakthrough. And this would involve some combination of technology as well as economics so that people will actually use this new technology. And so the question for which I don't know the answer is whether our creativity will be able to solve us for this mess that we've created. Thank you. <laughs>